And and coach, thank you very much for for taking the time. Uh, I, I have to admit, I did some uh, some poking around trying to to find a uh, a funny story on you, and I I was told I have to ask about a coach's golf trip to Pebble Beach. Am I talking okay. to a uh, to a guy that won a golf event at one of the most famous courses in the country? <laughs> My team won. Let's put it that way. But yeah, we won it this year. Uh, it's it's a pretty awesome event. You know, it's been going on. It's called the Coaches Challenge, and it's been going on a long time. And uh, Dick Tomey um, and uh, Spike Dykes and RC Slocum and a bunch of coaches started this thing way back in the day, and it's a lot of fun. It's a great event, and we were lucky enough to win it this year. Now I have to ask, and and with the you know the 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 Open Championship starting in the middle of the night tonight, uh, seventh hole, the par three, the the views and everything. What what what, what did you do off the tee? Yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> that is a tough. Yeah, I mean, depending on how the wind's blowing and all that, but yeah, it wasn't my best hole. Um, I had a couple good holes, but that wasn't one of them. But yeah, I mean that stretch of golf right there. Um, it's like six, seven, and eight. It's incredible, you know, along the ocean and the elevation changes and all the things that happen right there. It's, it's a great golf course. But that stretch is really unique. Dave Doran, North Carolina State head football coach, joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline. Uh, well, Coach, you have a good excuse, right? You, you have a day job that, that probably keeps you off the course as, from, from being there as much as you want, right? Uh, pretty demanding be, being a head coach, and, and it really kicks into gear uh, next week at ACC Media Days. And uh, I saw that you're bringing Brennan Armstrong along with you. Uh, how was he able to to show that type of leadership prior to any real game action, kind of as a transfer coming in? Granted, quarterback's a leadership position, but what about him made you comfortable bringing him to represent your program before he's he's gotten on the game field? Well, you know, he's different. And obviously, when you say without starting games, I mean, he started a lot of games at another school. and True. He was in, in the offense that we're running now with the same offense coordinator for a long time. So there's a lot of continuity there. So it's a little unique, you know, um, different than if he came in with no ties to our offense or no ties to a coach and or didn't have, you know, the, the accolades he had as a starter there for three years. So, you know, I think we're leaning on his experience and his talent and his history um, along with what he showed us when he was here this spring and, Super excited, you know, that Brennan's here um, and super excited about MJ as the future of our program at that position. How unusual is that where you have a player who, uh, you know, might know the offense better than some position coaches from his, his time with, with Coach yeah. Eli back, back at uh, Virginia? Yeah. You know, I've been through it one other time uh, when Eli Drinkwitz was here as the OC. Ryan Finley came from Boise mm -hmm. with him. And so I've seen it and seen how it helps. And, you know, those guys can – help the players on the field and coach the players on the field and talk to the players on the field, you know? So there's definitely that gain that you have uh, learning curve wise with your, your roster when they're out there, you know, not just when we're not around, but in the middle of a play or in a game when we can't say anything, they can correct and lean on other things that have happened in their careers in the system. That and then there's the, the the other question about it is not just the transition to uh, coach and I's offense. There actually you know is the question of what will that offense be. Uh, you know the last time coach and I and Brennan Armstrong were together it was 2021 at, at Virginia and they led the ACC in passing attempts with over 45 a game, which is which is really slinging it. Are we are we should we prepare to see like Air Wolfpack? Like should we prepare to see it, <laughs> like Carter Finley just lit up with 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 passes the entire game? Yeah, I think you'll see a little bit of a blend of things. Like, that's the thing I liked about Robert uh, in the process of hiring him. You know, he's been a part of a lot of different types of offenses. And even at UVA, before Brennan, they were running the ball with their quarterback a ton. And they are putting up stats and yards and points. But they had a different type of player, Bryce Perkins, at quarterback. And he knows how to evolve systems. You know, you saw him with Syracuse last year, the impact he had on their quarterback in that offense. So, what ours will be, I think you'll see some of that. I also see, think you'll see him use the talent we have. So, you know, how can he utilize Jordan Houston or how is he going to use, utilize Trent Penix, Keon Lassane? There's some guys there that, you know, bring things to the table for Coach, and that's what fall camp's going to be about. It's just what's his menu going to be. We're talking with Dave Doran, the head coach of the North Carolina – 
North Carolina State Wolfpack. Uh, Coach, I, I I have to know, right? There's I've always wanted to set like be in the room with some like five star recruit or something as they're being recruited just to see what coaches say. But I, th- what did you say to, to to Peyton Wilson to get him to come back to Raleigh when when seemingly the NFL was was all about bringing him up? Yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> Peyton uh, Peyton has a lot of things about him that make him unique, and he's been through a tough career injury wise, and I think. He saw himself growing a ton, not just as a player, but as a person and a leader over the last year. And I just feel like he had unfinished business, you know, and he knows that this game probably better than anyone on our team because of the injuries he's had is, is very precious and you could lose it on any snap. And so I think he just looked at, you know, coming back as an opportunity to with Isaiah and Drake leaving to be a leader and take his game to another level and enjoy the college experience for one more year. And um, that's where he was at, you know. I mean, he took a lot of time. He definitely prayed on it, thought about it, and I told him, you need to be at peace and have no regret, whichever way you go. And this is what he ultimately thought was best for him. Uh, you mentioned a few of the guys that are that are le- or have left that defense. Uh, it was pretty good last year, right, leading the ACC in, in, in points allowed. Do you, do you have any uh, names maybe that we should expect to hear quite a bit as they try to replace some of those big shoes that were, were left to fill? Well, I think, you know, Aiden White and Shy Battle are two corners or two guys mm-hmm. that we really think are excellent players at those positions. And when you have corners that can play man-to-man, it does give you ability as a play caller to do things and take risks, which I know Coach Gibson likes to do. Um, but those guys are both returning players. But to, to answer, you know, new players, I think, you know, losing Tanner Engel, um, losing <clears throat> Tyler Baker-Williams, is going to allow Devin Boykin and, and Jakeen Harris to really showcase what they can do. Even though they've played a lot for us, they're going to play a lot more now. Um, new names, maybe uh, Travali Price, who played a little bit last year, is probably one of our more improved defensive players, D-linemen. D and then it'll be fun to see the linebacker room. You know, there's three guys that have waited their turn um, that will now get snaps and play and start and to see what Devon Betty and – Jalen Scott and Caden Fordham can bring with Drake and Isaiah Levin. Now, now you brought up the two corners. I want to talk about them for a second because uh, Battle and White. You, you, I mean, there's a reason you brought them up, right? They're they're studs, and I'm a former corner uh, cornerback. And when I see two stud cornerbacks, I'm thinking, oh gosh, they can bring all the pressure that they want to bring because those guys can handle the outside by themselves. How how crazy and creative has your defensive staff gotten with the pressure game, knowing those two guys can handle their own outside? Well, like I said, I think we've always had a lot of blitzes we can run. I think it's just how many is smart and, you know, how many times do you want to risk it and knowing that you can lock a guy down. And sometimes it's not even a blitz. Sometimes, you know, you, you just roll the coverage one way and the backside's one-on-one, you know, and mm-hmm. it just gives you that, I guess, confidence as a play caller. You're not as nervous putting guys on islands. and. That's a good thing because it's not always that way, man. Like there's a lot of times you want to blitz and you're just like, it's not worth it. This guy's not going to cover that guy, you know, and to know that that's going to happen, it really frees up the playbook. Dave Doran, North Carolina state head football coach, coach, before we let you go here, one more, uh, I'm not, I don't even know if you're aware. I don't know if you're counting, but uh, I can, I can tell you this. You are five games away from tying and six games from breaking the record for most wins by a, by a head coach in, in North Carolina State Wolfpack history. Uh, what does that record mean mean to you, and are you counting? It'd be meaningful. You know, I mean, I've been here a long time and love the school, um, love Raleigh, and have put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this thing, and, and uh, a lot of players that I love, and they've all been a part of it. So it would be very meaningful, um, you know, and, and definitely be something that I um, would feel blessed to have. and you know, being number one on anything over a long period of time means something to you. I don't care what you do for a profession. and definitely have to give God the glory if I'm fortunate enough to make that happen this year. Coach, we appreciate the time. We'll uh, we'll check in with you again next week at Media Days. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me on, and go Pack.